Good morning internet, it's Friday and another quick photography tip for you guys. So, last week we had a look at subject separation in your images, which had to do with not making image, uh, subjects overlap or using depth of field to separate them. Your storytelling is so much stronger. Now, one of the things that I've been speaking to a lot of people or that a lot of people who are new to photography find difficult is whether to shoot landscape orientation or portrait orientation. All too often, people get stuck shooting just landscape orientation all the time, regardless of what the subject is, or regardless of what the visual energy in that frame is. Sounds a bit out there, but bear with me for a moment. If you check out these two images, um, let me just get them up here for you, they were right early on. If I look at these two images, Buffalo, yes? The one is shot as a portrait, the other one is shot as a landscape. Why? Because when I had all my settings chosen, I looked at the one on the left-hand side here and said, right, where is the visual energy going? Is this a side to side? Am I reading this image left to right, right to left? Or am I looking at it in up and down fashion? Easy, yes? Find the animal's eyes, follow the, the energy in this frame goes side to side. Flip it across to the right hand one, this guy, massive horns, this is, I read this image up and down, the energy in this, I find him, I move up and down through the frame. That makes the decision for me, yeah? Look at the image and decide which way am I reading, if you will, the scene. Another example, have a look at this one. It's a whole bunch of water buck. This is a side-to-side -side image, yes? There's a nice background, <clears throat> excuse me, but you look at the subject and you move side to side. So allow for that space for the viewer's eye to move side to side through your frame. Another example, very simple. We talk about negative space. Negative space is the area in front of this elephant leaving for him, space for him to walk into, but I'm not gonna shoot this as a portrait orientation. Yes, the sky is dramatic, but I'm reading this image side to side. Allow for that movement. Another example, this one, again, two giraffe necking, having a bit of an argument. I shot this as a portrait orientation because when I looked at the scene, there was a lot of stuff happening on the side, but when I looked at it, my eyes went up and down as I watched the scene. That made me shoot it portrait orientation. Another example, a herd of wildebeest in the Khalakhari. Easy, they're walking in a line, I've got the stripy, almost kind of layered um, clouds at the top, which again leads my eye left to right, side to side, therefore shoot at landscape and allow for your eyes to work through the frame. Two very similar examples, let me put these together on the screen for you. So, on the left hand side again, this guy was sitting quite upright, there wasn't much happening side to side, I chose to give it a portrait orientation, which emphasizes the height, the vertical aspect of it. On the right hand side, the barbet on the right, the red face, more angled, he's looking into the area more, there's a more definite, as I'm seeing slash reading this image, side to side orientation for me, therefore I chose to shoot that as a landscape orientation. The same applies, all of the same applies when you crop your images in your processing, but we'll look at that in a future video. So, when you're next out in the field, look at what you're photographing, take a slight moment and decide, am I reading, you as the photographer, Am I reading this side to side or am I reading it up and down? It's more than likely the same way your viewer will read that images so you can decide how best to present that subject and see. Done. Lots squished into a short time there. That's your Friday morning photo tip. My name is Jerry from Wild Eye. I'll see you guys again next week. Have a good one.